Hello and welcome to this video. Um, where we're going to retouch this image. Um, it was taken for um, some magazine some time ago, but I found it. I'm kind of like this image, so I'm um, readjusting, rework a little bit and showing you workflow how we can enhance this image. So you can see our horizon a little bit down. We have some foreigner objects around. Um, some piece of the clouds right here may be a little bit boring and we'll see what we can do. And let's look what our end result it will be this way you can see we can a little bit flatten we remove some object we remove this net around we enhance a lot of shadows add a little bit more dirt coin kind of give you more effect again it's before and after of course as say right here we can preview that is a little bit after it's leveling so i won't show you before leveling but now this is will be our retouching. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, start working on this image. So let's go ahead and uh, start kind of selecting editing a photo. Before we begin, just one point, we're going to work with a um, photo I took it for the magazine for Charlie Anders. He's the Knights of Manham. Um, it's actually very interesting because they do real life jousting and man they are sometimes get hurt a lot it's real um dangerous sport full metal i mean it's very impressive so if you're interested in this i'll recommend to go check the knights of Markham. um i think they even have it on um history channel some or some other ones they have it now um tv show going on so you can preview that one but it's a very interesting sport um very dangerous sport and of course, as photo shoot, it's very, very interesting photo shoot because all this armor you can see, this is real metal armor. And you actually can see some like dance from like right there, real jousting and everything. Um, photo shoot was interesting because when you go sitting down on a um, ground and he just galloping by you literally a few inches away, uh, by the way, the horse was controlled unbelievably in this case. I mean, he can perform perfectly in a um, lot of, lot of war gun in this. But point is this, so it took some photos and I think this one could be very interesting for us to edit and see how we can enhance example to bring a little bit more. So let's start by going inside the camera RAM. And inside the camera RAM, I want to bring a couple of things. The sky is look interesting. We maybe add more clouds. We'll see as we're going. But first step, of course, we'll take our shadows down. And you can see if we take highlights down, sorry, we'll bring more details on the shadows. Uh, first view, I can see building here, some fence around there. We probably want to remove it, a little bit level up. So we'll see how that's going. Uh, let's put it our sharpening about 70 between 70 80 so it will restore some of those elements we'll remove chromatic abbreviations and use it camera profile which is help us to remove some distortions lens and as well remove vignetting in the corners next i want to go in a color mixer luminous and in the luminous you can see we can modify some settings for example if we take blues down we can also bring a little bit more details in our sky. I don't necessarily want too dark, but just bring a little bit down. As well, we have it on a horse, maybe a little bit up, and we can go with yellow ground, just bring slightly. Again, this right here ground, I want a rework, maybe add a little bit more shadows, focus on the motion on the um, nights going towards us. So we'll work on that one. Okay, I think it's almost all up let's go look on the shadows yeah let's just bring a little bit up shadows and i think this is actually was shot um on a canon 5d mark 3 if i'm right and a, or mark 2 even and the problem is in early version we can have it noise here like right here and this is noise what's happening when we go with the increase compensation for the shadows and a lot of time when we increase sharpening. So we'll just take down to 63 around that one. Okay, let's go ahead and open this image inside the Photoshop. Um, this is the latest Photoshop CC. Um, probably a bunch of other ones will work as well. 
So let's do first, we'll go to try reposition. And problem is, if we have, if we set a little bit more this way, kind of start falling back. So it, or we can go straight. So here's a your personal choice. You can actually go straight. So it's look a little bit more straight with a horse, or we can work a little bit more with horizon. We could actually take even a horse and little bit adjust. So let's, you know, let's maybe do this. So I'll adjust here. I want to be sure my content aware, delete crop the set, and it will should fill up some of those side elements. Let's go ahead, click OK. And this fill up. The reason is why I'm doing because I want this horizon line kind of a little bit more straight. It does not um, feel like it's falling out. And actually horse look not bad. We could also do with a horse. Just as example, we can go just select us to preview. Okay, oops, control Z, control copy paste and we can just see for example we can straighten up just a little bit like that okay i think this way maybe it will work slightly straight up okay so right here we have it and i'm not sure if we will keep this way just look that way actually you know i like a little bit on the side because this is give it motion straight it's look like going i think this is give it a little bit motion like he going towards us bending so i yeah let's delete it i don't want to say straight but if you want to straight or what you need to do create this image will create a little bit mask around this i'm just showing what you can do but no sorry <laughs> don't don't need to do this and you'll take these edges right here softener them out blend you can see something going on the background and you'll just remove backgrounds as well but overall here's like very things how we can we can blend them together okay if we're going to do this way okay and of course, on the background, this area will just fill up with the sky. But as I said before, because I do like a little bit better when it's kind of tilting, so we leave that one. Okay, <clears throat> let's leave this on hold, just in case we'll decide to come back afterwards. And the next what I want to do is rework these elements right here. Just remove fence and remove these trees. So let's go start with the trees and I want to duplicate this. And the reason is duplicating because we're going to use patch tool. And patch tool does not work on the empty layer. So we'll need to do from here. The reason is for the patch tool, so we can go select, for example, this area. Like right here. Okay. We'll drag uh, maybe too far. Position. And let it go and you can see it's kind of nice fill up so this area now i'll select and i'll just bring maybe even like right there it's gonna fill up okay let's go work on around here same we'll select it and press and one more so we kind of remove this area same let's go ahead and remove some civilizations and adjusting i don't want to see duplicates um right here is a little bit will be more elements we need to fix and we can do same way we have two choices we can do we can do or with um selection healing brush tool and photoshop for example even with this will does sometimes surprisingly very nice job so if you go like this you can see how easy it is already we can go a couple times to readjust and it should be kind of going fix for us okay go right right there likely um it's not but problem is you can see with you doing this way um 
we're going to have some problems with the covering. Same, I think, on the ground, if we try to do, sometimes it will go and we'll have a problem with um, grid right here visible. So it's the reason why I like to use patch tool, because with patch tool, we actually can select areas, move where we want it, and that will copy. Again, some we sometimes we need to remove several times. Okay, so we'll go like right there. And this, when we get closer to mountain, we can actually just move a little bit away, like positioning. And nice things about Photoshop, you can see how well it will match with coloring and others so we can do uh, overall it will take time most important it is this edge and with this edge okay, let's go move here you see how this become a little bit more fuzzy i'll show you how to work on this um close to the foot because we need to stamp out um if we don't stamp out if we come closer and just select and move problem is you can see how the fuzzy it's happening those so for those we want to use actually clone stamp tool be sure it is 100 percent opacity we select one and we'll just start cloning how say likely for us mountain it's look um some more color so we'll just remove it okay adjust here we can select one other thing, so we will use it another tool as well to move, but um, we want to have the same coloring. Okay, let's go ahead, click right there, and I want to deselect align. So I want to just sample this area. So when we don't align, what's happening? If I click here, I start work. Okay, it's going okay, and then when I move it, it starts from the same area. If I do align and I move it, it's maybe calm on a shoe and then we have a brown color so i don't necessarily want that right now so i'm just going like right there a little bit to remove around because remember edge but we'll have a nice things about edge i'll show you in a second how we can do um with other one oops see what's happening when it's aligned there so one click and release click and release so we'll do like this. Okay, let's go zoom out. Again, right here we have a little bit more. We can just uh, and again a cloning. If it's we want blend, we can take opacity 20, 30, select, and in this case it will just blend. Problem is with the blending, we start losing see the grain. We could restore this grain, and actually we'll do this in the end. I'll show you how to restore this grain as well. So now let's go back to this edge and I told you before we'll just select so you know let's select a bit bigger area don't want too close to the flag we'll fix the flag so I'll select like okay too much okay let's go select channels down right here okay we'll move away put around that area again select here Just to add this area. Okay, now we can go this select. And right here we have a nice area, so we can also just go select like a longer area, put it around ground, and I'm gonna try to align the ground with ground, so we'll have it about the same. And this work so far very good for us. So same, we'll just take this one, realign. You can see we're already removing that element. Okay, same with the ground. We can just select, move it around this area, select from another ground, and let's select this one, move it away. So it's okay, we have a little bit of distortions to work actually in our effort with the ground. Um, close up right here, we still have it a little, little bit, so let's go back to our cloning tool. And we'll just let's make it smaller. Okay, select it. Hundred percent. 
I don't want to step on that stuff and we'll just like a little bit adjusting. Okay. So let's see what we have. This was before and now. So we did remove. And I still have it. This right here. It almost was looking like a piece of snow to me. But it's actually from other side, so we'll just gently remove that one. Okay, let's go see before and after. So this is how we clone out, just clean up, reduce, and let's look closer. Oh, look right here, we have it a little bit. Let's use it again, a cloning tool. And I don't necessarily like how the cloning tool work in this case. So we'll just again take it. Oops, selecting, moving. I think right here maybe something, but we don't need to worry too much about this. is quite a bit far away. Just to clean up, so we'll have a nice horizon. Um, this is a little bit blue, but we can adjust a little bit more. But I think the white work okay when we're going with um detailing so let's go next we'll create new and so we'll have a retouch backdrop this is a model i'll try to separate them and model retouch we'll just going to use a healing brush on this okay let's go zoom in and i'm just usually just check very fast if we need it to chop anything, but it's already so we're good. Yeah, well, maybe want to add some little bit more dirt coming from there, a little bit more for action. Well, maybe you know those bolts, and this is actually bolts because what's happening, they have this front plate right here, it's where usually the heat, and you can see the marking from um, jousting when it's going to side. But right here it's clean because they have this special front plate that protecting them and those is bolts to help with this but i think we can kind of a little bit remove those bolts just slightly so they will be a little bit cleaner look so a little bit cleaner on the mask i think other things let's look if we have any reflections that we don't want it but no nope, it's look good okay i think we're good here so let's go ahead zoom out and not so much for the touching on the model, but I think that is um, work so far. So let's a uh, couple other things. We want to add some dodge and burn to this. So for this, we'll go create a new layer. Okay, right here we'll call dodge and burn, and we'll fill up this with 50% gray. Set this to soft light. We'll use our brush tool. I want to be sure it's a soft round. And we'll set 10% opacity with a black. Let's start with the shadows. Okay, we'll go in. And I am just want to add a little bit more depth. And depth we're adding by um, darker, which is far away from us, and brighter, which is closer to us. So this way we can kind of like add a little bit more. And you can use the X key to go from dark to white. And this is will help us to add some of those. Okay, let's go back smaller. X again, a little bit darker in some of those areas. I want to add a little bit more dimensions and white highlights and other ones. So we'll do highlights here. Add a little bit more shadows. Like in the muscle, we can easily just add darken here and highlights, and it will bring a little bit more elements. And I'm just using X key to go to brighter or darker. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we'll go right there. And again, I highly recommend for you, if you're interested or you want to look, check the um, 
the TV show. It is Knights of Mayhem. And uh, I mean, seriously, it's very interesting sport. I don't think I ever will do by myself because um, in some cases I don't like to injure myself. But if you like those extreme things, you can look. But it's very exciting, very interesting ways to the sports. Okay, and I think he's actually Charlie Anderson. He's the world champion on that one. So we'll just add a little bit right there. Okay, so right here we have our kind of slightly adjustments. So we'll focus everything. Let's play a little bit maybe with the clouds, see if we can add. And I don't know, maybe it will work or not. It's one way to find out when we start working on that. Okay, so what are we going to do with the sky? We'll try different ones. The one important thing is to understand the heat, uh, it is a sunset was it's afternoon and well kind of more close to sunset and you can see sun right here going down and he coming from actually east side to west side of what he was running so the sun up front of him not behind and we'll try to match but if you don't match it's okay we'll can slightly play around so i'm going to select one cloud so we'll put like right here let's extend so we'll have a horizon cover and i see the lights going from this side from here so we'll try to match some of that let's plot, place it we'll go select alt or option and click on a mask so it's hiding and we can use it a uh, white color 10 percent to slightly brush in um i don't want too much overlay but what i want to see it's like right here you can see we're adding a little bit more to the just boring blue. We're adding a little bit more details. So it's cloud actually, it's not that bad, but just a little bit more. And of course, if we have a problem with lighting, we can go over to the screen. It may add or soft light. Those ones may work as well. Multiply will darken. Let's go just right now work with the normal lights. And we can just go right there. Let's go over him. Don't worry too much about this. And I just want to see how it's overall will match with our scenery. Okay, let's go. Actually, let's go zero. And I just want like this. I just want to see if it's will look okay. We'll right here a little bit yellowish, but I. It's not bad yellow. I like it, um, how it's matching. Not sure if it will work very well. Let's go zoom in. X and just uh, right here, go around him. I just want to be sure we cover. Um, all what I'm doing right now at this point Okay, and our mountains. Right there. I just want to be look if it will look okay. Now I think it's a little bit overdone compared to our ground. So this sky does not work, and that's what's happening. Um, they're trying different skies and see if they work. Um, which cloud, because sometimes I don't like necessarily, it's a little bit boring. I want to add a little bit more clouds but I want to do them without overwhelm. Another solution for this could be if you have it, special brushes, like for example, let's go right here and we have it, uh, cloud brushes we're going to use. You can always take a cloud brushes and let's go, go zero, increase, and you can just add clouds this way. Um, again, because the different color, we'll just select this color and you can add different way again not necessarily all clouds will work but it is another things just add a little bit more you know clouds like this way yeah i don't think those ones will work we can try putting them but i don't yeah i don't think these clouds necessarily working so let me try another um, bring more clouds, more atmosphere. And if you don't have a collection of clouds, I'm actually putting together a set of the clouds that I created. 
I take daily a lot of clouds picture because used in compositing and I like to use those clouds to put it in. But in this case, you know, maybe we'll just put it these clouds. I don't want overdone. I don't want to take attention away. Just do like this way. We can look on a soft light. Screen knob. Yeah, multiply actually add quite a bit, but I think the between overlay soft light, soft light will work better. Again, we'll go select element. Now go back to our brush. 10% white. And I just want to add it. I say I don't want too much, but I want this area where I'm adding. I just want to add a little bit more interest. Not just boring blue, but like that way. We'll just add slightly more. There you go. I think this one work way better. Okay, let's look again before and after. So yeah, we added a little bit more interest to the clouds. Okay, um, let's go to add dirt. And let's name this cloud. We'll go create new and dirt, what we're going to do, it is select some of the darker area like this sampling. We'll go to um, Ron's Debris. And those ones you actually can get from um, Dirt Brush, Dirt Eyes, Powder. There you go. We'll work with powder. And you can um, purchase them. This is purchase one. It's not free ones, but you can get them at um, Daz. Uh, 3d website so you can purchase from there and if you seriously want to do this I highly recommend it's very nice brushes they're done very good work very well okay so we'll go to multiply mode and if you can see how you add they're coming out so if they leave it too much we can add take another color sampling you can see we can add a little bit more too much on this one so let's reducing Oh yeah, that one will look better. So we'll just add a little bit right there, a little bit more dust. And let's select lighter color. So we'll go to mix this. Okay, let's select another one. Add a little bit more like around there. Okay, and brighter. Let's go with the wider color and problem with wider of course the if we over 50 percent um well actually it's a zero if we're on a white it's won't be visible it will be darker if we want to add lighter we'll probably want to work with a soft light or other ones so because if we can go here and select like soft light so you can see it will add slightly brighter same if we go with the screen you can see it's add a little bit better. So we'll go back here. Don't worry if it's too much. We'll fix. But what I want to do is add this, you know, kind of like dirt dust almost going. Okay, I will select another one. Okay, let's go next. We'll create one more layer. And now we can go inside. We'll have a lot of powder here. So we can select, we have this one type of powder. Just, you know, just add. Okay, let's go a little bit darker maybe. You know what I want to do is just add a little bit kind of action to this. Yeah, there you go, here. You know, let's go just separate. So I know which one and let's go one. We add a kind of more dirt cloud. So we don't necessarily want debris. We want to go and select um, fog. Brushes. We'll go to select um, something maybe around that one. Okay, let's go make it brighter 
and we'll just uh, select a few different ones right there okay we want to select yeah this one select um, a little bit more color we want to add and you can play around you can set how they look with a screen soft light because you can see with soft light they add a little bit more and just but overall right here it's a debris okay let me go ahead just debris and before and after it just add a little bit more of this some dirt action kind of creating okay so we add clouds we add a little bit debris um, actually you know what compositing we always can reframe and you can see how it's work for example if we need it we can just composite him almost like this out of screen so head like edit corner but if you want, I think this is actually better. So let's see if we want to go down. We could put it like this, like getting, I'm using this corner of attention and I'm seeing how it's coming, probably maybe even like right there and a little bit shrink. Um, again, if you do this for um, magazines or other things, you maybe want to keep it um, how like for the text to put around for me i want to display him like almost out of the screen so if i have a vanish point i'll put it in here running out of my screen so closer to the edge almost ready to attack but we still have it full scenery so you can play around with different compositing see which one is working better for you Okay, we done this way. Let's go add a little bit more enhanced details. And we can use Control Shift Alt E, Command Option Alt E to take all visible images, combine them together. And we're going to use this one to enhance a little bit between brightness contrast. So we'll go image adjustment, we'll go to black and white. And here what because I know our end result, and this is will take for you to kind of experience experiment just trying to see what's going on um, but I know we'll use it this soft light mode in end and soft light work very interesting it's contrast mode so wherever it's 50% gray it's invisible if it's go brighter it will kind of enhance it will be this curve will be more enhanced in a white and it's darker down so it's contrast based mode okay so we'll go red and you can see right here red we don't necessarily need it to add well, this is a little bit brighter if we want to actually bring a little bit down coloring here sky this is more interesting because you can see we can make quite a bit darker going on a sky and i think this is will enhance and let's look on this color yeah i think just bring even down the colors will bring better on a sky let's go click ok and this is too much we need a little bit flatten because if we don't do this it will be look quite a bit strong. Also, let's go ahead and set 11 pixels radius for both. And if you just see like this shadow and highlights, just click on show more options. So it will expand for you. Okay, let's go radius 11, 11 for shadows and highlights. We take amount 100 and 100% 100 for both. And by using tone, we want to bring down. And this is what will be quite a bit darker. And this will bring just a little bit up. So you can see what we're doing. We're setting a little bit that contrast. And um, we'll go normal, switch to the soft light. So let's see what's happening. So you can see how it give it like almost HDR look. But again, I'm not necessarily, if I like it like on the background right here, I want to haze. So what I'm going to do is create a mask. We'll take our brush. We'll go to set this brush to soft round. Um, black color and we'll just start 
masking right there. So I don't necessarily want, I want haze in the horizon. And by adding just like right there, you can see we can just add a little bit contrast around, but we'll preserve the haze in the background. And of course, you can always go and work with opacity, see which one is working. So let's go bring around here. Okay, we come actually coming very close. One more thing. So let's go again to Dutch and Burn. Okay, with a fill up 50% gray. And in many cases, I have it like tons of Dutch and Burn I do. Okay, and this one, I'm just adding a little bit more focus where I want it. So I'm just like darkening around the legs here, making a bit more on the ground. Okay, a little bit sky darkened, so we'll have a better look there. And by the hero, we'll just highlight right there, Ed. So you can see it's almost like, you know, we're focusing on a hero. It's what we're doing. We'll bring this towards. Okay, let's go next. Uh, we'll go use selective color. Well, actually, before selective color, so let me hide this one. You remember we had problem with the grain. One thing to restore grain, we can use it again, fill up, go to filter noise, add noise, okay, and switch to soft light. So if for some reason you lost grain, like you remember around here, this is will overall apply grain. So let's make, see like right here, this element is too smooth and it's grainy. So by doing this, we can kind of, you can see how they start coming together. So all what it does, it's it help us to um, unify. So it does not stand out out of the image. Okay, let's go back to our selected colors. We'll start with the black and I want to take a black and bring them just a little bit off and we'll go blue, colder colors, a little bit of greenish and go to cyan. So we'll do a little bit darker. On the neutrals opposite, we want to actually bring them a little bit to yellow, green, and a little bit to the red. So what we're playing with those complementary colors, we're playing cold and warm. Okay, let's go look on our whites, and there's our whites. So we can bring them just slightly up, and again, we can play a little bit red, and we can see we can add them warmer. Or a little bit cyanish. I think actually a little bit cyanish maybe work better. Okay, plus one. So right here, we apply color correction. It's not actually color correction. It's more as the tonal adjustment to our image. Um, so right there, we have it a nice looking. I think it's look okay. We could play a little bit more on removing make background blur, but I think with clouds and everything, it's good look good. Uh, let's go ahead and now we'll take all of these. You know, before doing this, actually, I want to do one more thing. So before, let's go to create curve. We'll take this curve, bring it down so it's dark. And notice I create curve just under the selective color, under our color adjustments. We'll go create a select frame around and we'll fill with a black internal. So we'll have this small white frame around. Now, as it's selected, mask selected, we'll go in a masking and we'll just bring our feathering and switch this to the soft light. So all what it does, what we've done, you just add a little bit vignetting. Okay, if it's vignetting strong, we'll take just slightly down. But again, this is just help kind of force it us by viewing. Uh, our eyes work interesting. We'll focus on the white spider first, and less on a dark spot. So in this case, we're forcing our focus on the middle of the image. So all what we'll do with this. Okay, uh, one more thing. So maybe disable selective color when it's um, vignetting. So when it's selected, I just like to name layers so I know what is going on. We'll go select, Control Shift Alt E, Command Option Alt E on a Mac, select new layer. And, um, you know, let's do a couple things, actually. One, let's create glow. And glow is just one in specific area. So we'll go filter, blur, Gaussian blur on this. 
Well, let's bring it a bit down, like around here. Click OK. We'll go select the, actually, let's go first. I'll show you what we're going to do. We'll select screen and Alt or Option and click on a mask so it's hiding. Now, when we have the brush selected, let's go select white, 10%. I'll just mask right here where I see highlights. This is almost will make for us like shiny, you know, just add a little bit of this shining in his armor. So and you can see before and after it just add a little bit more shining so we'll see kind of more specular lighting almost adding all this blurring okay and again we'll drop this below grain so the grain going over okay let's go select one more control shift alt e around everything so it will combine and you know what, this is actually, I done, I think, with the grain, so with grain, double graining. So let's go put above the grain, that one. Okay, so we'll have a new layer, and that one is, actually, let's delete it, because how I say I created before grain, so we need to move up. And I'll shift out E to combine all of them. And this one, I just want a little bit test. We'll go inside the filter forge. Okay, and in the filter forge. Okay, we don't need update. I want to just play a little bit with filters, see if it's come up very good. Um, by the way, this is a very fast and easy way to add filters. If you're interested, um, filters with itself, it's free and just search for my geek at play, um, preset filters, but filter forge, however, it's a, you need to purchase this application, 30 days free trial. Um, I have some videos and I actually have videos how you can get for free if you spend a little bit time. So you can actually download application, you can create filters, submit them. And when your filters become popular, they give you special points. And for those points, you can purchase free upgrades or lifetime upgrades or and so on. So actually, I think this one will work nice for the base. We'll go inside and I'll just add a little bit of red. A pinch of the green. I'll put more to the blue and let's go on a cycle. We'll go to add more for a little bit to cyanish kind of. And it's personal preference. You can do different colors. I just like cyan and other colors. And our vibrance, too much. Let's go back to 50. Yep, I think it will just leave it like 51, 51, just a little bit. Let's go ahead, click apply. Um, this is another way to do just add additional coloring. And we can also do same through the curve. So you can see just a little bit enhance. And I'm going to bring this a little bit down, enable the color. Just bring a little bit more situation to the crown. And let's go to select curves. We'll go with a color. We'll switch blending mode to the color. We'll go to the blue channel, bring darker blue up mid on the middle, kind of like this. Let's go to red, take one down to cyan on the shadows, and I want to restore my other one. So I'm just gonna put a few points on line. Kind of a little bit more retroish look. I think it's look interesting kind of painting again. Um, these ones too. Let's group them together. I'll just call color adjustments on this. And this is all before and after color adjustment. Okay, I think we're almost done. So let's go ahead and group them together. Call it retouching. And of course, we remember we leveled the ground, so it won't be necessary. But overall, here's what we have before. Okay. Well, relatively before, because we did tilt a little bit. 
but overall it touching before and after so again before and after Okay, so thank you for watching this video. I hope you found this um, interesting and useful so you can take some techniques to enhance your photos. And if you like it, please give it a thumbs up or put it comments on YouTube. It will help uh, me a lot. And you're always welcome to support on Patreon. And like I said before, I'm going to add some of those clouds, create special pack for you if you want to use it in your artwork. It will be available again for the Patreons or on my uh, Geek at Play website. Thank you for watching this video and have a fun time.